Namaskar viewers. Today, again in Doyen's Media's uh, Health Question Series, we have Dr. Swati Garekar. Uh, all of us have spoken with uh, cardiologists before, and today it is about children. So um, we do hear uh, that a particular child is born with hole in a heart and has some sort of a challenge, breathing problem, but we don't know what exactly is the terminology and what is the treatment course. So to get more wisdom on that, we have Dr. Swati with us, and she's a pediatric cardiologist from Mumbai. So doctor, first of all, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Excuse me, just a second. Um, thank you very much for that introduction. Yes, children are special. And uh, uh, I'm, I would love to spend some time with you, telling you more about what I do on a daily basis. Yes. So, so doctor, uh, first come first. Um, how do you really evaluate such a small kid who cannot express anything, talk anything, that it is having some sort of trouble to do with art? So your question is, how do we evaluate somebody who doesn't even tell you, uh, who can't tell you anything? So which is why as a pediatric cardiologist, my training first was for a pediatrician after mm -hmm. MBBS and mm -hmm. after that pediatric cardiology specialization. Mm -hmm. So basically babies who have a hole in the heart will not have any pain in their chest mm -hmm. because of the hole. But what the hole will do is make the heart bigger in size and okay. have the heart work harder. I see. And the impact then is that whatever milk the baby drinks mm -hmm. goes towards the heart for it to use up because it needs more energy to do its job. So there's less milk, less calories, so to speak, available for the baby's growth. A child with a significant hole in the heart shows up with lack of weight gain as a common symptom. Okay. So, do thick se pee rahe, lekin vajan nahi pad rahe. I see. Now, even before that, bacha jo hai, the baby who is breastfeeding yeah. will not be able to feed properly the okay. baby with the hole in the heart. So, okay. that also is an issue because they get tired. For a baby with a hole in the heart, for them to drink milk, like breastfeed is like running a race. Uh -huh. Extraction is difficult. Mm -hmm. So then two things against them. They can't extract milk. So they get less milk and whatever milk they are drinking, that also the heart uses up for its work. So very little weight gain. True, true. I just want to mention one more thing about the hole in the heart and how babies present to us is they get pneumonias. Okay. Now, children, healthy children shouldn't get frequent pneumonias. But here is this baby who again and again is getting cough, cold, maybe pneumonia. So certainly something that should make the pediatrician think that maybe there is a hole in the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, doctor, the uh, congenital or uh, what we call it as a by birth uh, challenges, uh, are they not able to detect during the pregnancy itself? You're talking about antenatal detection. Yes. Did I understand you right? Yes, yes. Okay. So, in the ideal world, every pregnant woman should get what we call anomaly scan. Yes. The ultrasound. The ultrasound yes. of yes. the baby from the head to the toe at 18 weeks. Mm. So, such an ultrasound would look at the brain and the chest and the kidneys, liver, toes, the lip, everything and give you a health card of that. And also as part of the anomaly scan, the radiologist who does it will look at the heart. So, you know, how's the heart? Are there four chambers seen like grossly? Correct. The heart is a very small structure mm. and not just that, mm. it beats, it moves, unlike mm. the kidney or the brain mm. or the liver, it's mm. difficult to image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the woman can have an anomaly scan mm -hmm. and if that shows that something is wrong, let us say some organ system is appearing abnormal or maybe what the radiologist saw of the heart looks abnormal mm -hmm. or there are certain under other conditions. For example, if this is an in vitro fertilization, IVF baby, if the mother has diabetes from even before pregnancy, if the mother had some high fever or took medicine, especially in the first trimester of pregnancy, mm -hmm. 
if there's somebody in the family who has a heart defect by birth mm. so such that population of pregnant women should get a fetal echocardiogram okay fetal echocardiogram will is a special uh, test okay where the focus is only on the heart okay and it's done by around 18 to 22 weeks mm. by the pediatric cardiologist or mm. a trained sonographer radiologist mm-hmm there they will focus we focus only on the heart and try and see how things look the uh, you know chances of us missing something still exist if you talk mm-hmm. about how it is let's say in the uk or the us mm-hmm. it's not as if everything is getting picked up before birth mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. so even in the best case scenario there are things that can be missed absolutely what i am trying to yeah, understand but, is uh, the test that you just now mentioned is it not affordable or is it just a lack of awareness so that's a great question uh, it's not just about affordability it is also about uh, whether it is available locally mm-hmm. because it's a technically intensive test not everybody can do it mm-hmm. uh, so when we talk about something what are the qualities of a screening test mm-hmm. it should be cheap it should be easily available mm-hmm. and it mm-hmm. should have a high you know pick up rate mm-hmm. so fetal echocardiography has a high pick up rate, rate okay. but the problem is that it is not you know easily available okay. and the cost is well it's it's as much costly as a normal scan so i don't okay. think cost is a big issue should but it's also very time consuming so we are better off doing the anomaly scan by the center where they at least look at the heart and then refer for a fetal echo hmm. i think that's a very important point because i did not hear so much about doing this heart specific test during the pregnancy it's mostly the scanning and other parameters but uh, this is something needs more awareness definitely mm-hmm. uh so doctor what are the typical heart failure causes or syndromes that you identify so i i think um, the way i'll answer your question is we'll talk about what kind of things can go wrong in a baby's heart okay. so the most commonly heard is the hole in the heart yes the hole can be between the upper two chambers where it's called an ast or it can be in the lower two chambers it's called a vst okay the this is the most common the other things are the valves the doors that open and close with every heartbeat mm-hmm. so those valves may not be opening properly mm-hmm. or may not be closing properly so that also is a category of valvular heart disease okay then you can have connections which go wrong remember the heart is formed in the first 2 months of pregnancy by the time the woman realizes and is sure that she's pregnant by that time heart is already formed so whatever had to happen happened then the local environment Correct. of the of the embryo yes. which means whatever you know the the health factors whether Correct. it is you know the pollution or you know whatever the maternal yes. diet whatever is impacting or the maternal paternal genes they influence in the first 8 weeks mm-hmm. of pregnancy mm-hmm. so so uh, getting back to you know uh, what we are talking about the vessels at that point if they don't if they're not connected properly that can also lead to problems mm-hmm. you know to describe to you very very simply yes, the sir. heart is a pump but there are actually two pumps in the heart yes. the left sided pump pumps blood to the whole body at a higher pressure yes. while the right sided pump pumps blood at a lower pressure one fourth the pressure only to the lungs so what if the vessel that's supposed to arise from the right side gets switched with the left sided mm-hmm. vessel mm-hmm. so that's called tga that's a major heart problem a newborn with a tga mm-hmm. is very very blue at birth and needs life saving surgery in the first two weeks mm-hmm. then there is a blue baby syndrome i don't know if you have heard of it mm-hmm. but in this there is a hole and there are abnormalities of how the vessel is arising and there is an abnormality of the valve uh, of the artery going to the lungs so mm-hmm. a combination also exists okay so this is blue baby syndrome or tetralogy of fallow it's the most common kind a uh, most common reason why you know babies some babies look blue at birth so this isn't just a little tinge of blueness on the tips of the uh, fingers but really the tongue is blue and the palms and the soles are blue and this is where the pulse oximeter check comes in 
so it's been actually a wonder tool yes what that pulse oximeter does is it you you plug it on yes. your finger right yes, and it can tells you what the oxygen saturation is of the artery underneath it absolutely so this is something very essential for our babies with heart defects mm. because a lot of them have blue blood blo- uh, uh, flowing in their mm. bodies mm. so if we have the right size instrument mm. sometimes the adult one doesn't fit in the True. baby tools yes so you need that special kind and if you were to check the pulse oximeter saturation reading mm. of all babies mm. at birth mm. you would be able to pick up Hmm. lot of problems that otherwise get missed true true so this is actually a guideline practiced in the us and many parts of the developed world and a couple states in india hmm. um also even in my city mumbai you know hmm. our hospital of course and municipal hospitals we practice this every newborn baby before going home gets a pulse oximeter check so because sometimes we get fooled we think baby looks all right but actually the saturation is not normal okay. indian babies dark skin babies it's very yes. hard to pick yes. out yes. blue discoloration true true skin color absolutely so uh, doctor what is the rate uh, is there any pattern rural uh, urban or any specific uh, category so i'll tell you this data from world over and honestly there is nothing like this rural or urban okay. you know, distribution okay. yeah okay. now one thing that we could speculate is the population may be a certain class of population may be more exposed to pollutants mm. whether it is through the water that the mm. family the mother or pregnant mm. lady is drinking mm. you know polluted mm. Mm. or living in an environment where there is inhalation of pollutants or there is poor quality nutrition nutrition absolutely yeah or Perhaps working time. in some industries where there is exposure to you know solvents like mm-hmm. uh, paint industry mm-hmm. dry cleaning industry mm-hmm. beauty salons mm-hmm. so then there might be a little predisposition that maybe mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. there's a bigger chance that the baby might have a heart defect but no uh, rural urban divide as okay. such okay and how about uh, mothers who are habitual of smoking and alcohol intake so certain kinds of simple heart defects are more common in this population in this yeah. population so okay. and certainly as you might be aware it affects the baby's well being from head to toe yeah okay. something to because be because i have been today. speaking with uh, almost all the doctors are uh, giving me this caution that uh, mm-hmm. these two habits are adding to the misery big way mm-hmm. whether it is neurology whether it is uh, gynec or anything for that matter absolutely um, doctor uh, very basic question you can uh, check it away saying that very foolish but still uh, as just now you mentioned that within 8 weeks the heart is developed mm-hmm. um, so uh when the child or the baby is born the heart is fully functional uh, is mm-hmm. my understanding correct correct okay so there is no further growth after that there is growth in the size of size, the heart with the age yeah. that is understood yeah um so doctor um what i safely want to say is unless there is something at the birth time uh for few years the person is safe i mean no heart cardiac related uh, problem if it is a normal life maybe post particular age group people will face some uh, heart related issues but otherwise on an ideal situation it shouldn't be a trouble so so the thing is that we are talking about two different uh, disease processes yes. Yes. one is the adult kind of heart disease right that is lifestyle related mm. for the most mm. part mm. but the kind the my kind is mm. the one by birth by birth yes right mm. so if there is a hole or bad connections or chamber being small then that can manifest even on the first hour after birth mm. the the reason the baby doesn't suffer for the 8 mm. months you know after the heart is fully made mm-hmm. of pregnancy mm-hmm. is that in pregnancy the lungs of the baby do not contribute 
like they do post birth post after birth, okay. birth you, the baby is breathing on his own or on her own before birth that's not happening the mm. lungs are water filled mm. so there are some changes unique mm. fetal circulation we say the unborn baby has a unique kind of circulation where actually blue and red blood compulsorily mixes and that's why it is not impacted at all until the baby comes out of the birth canal and takes the first breath that's, that's when yeah things go wrong for some babies okay so during that period do you also observe doctor the uh, hypertension the pulmonary hypertension in kids also okay so pulmonary hypertension means high pressure in the pulmonary circuit pulmonary circuit means the circuit of the lungs we are talking about the right sided heart pump true and higher pressure in it hmm. we encounter it all the time in our children with heart defects for example the common kind of hole the the vst the large vst in that there is a big hole in the wall separating the right and the left pumps so if you imagine and this is physics if uh, actually normally pressure on one side is x and the other side is 1/4 as much but now you have connected the two sides because there is a large hole large hole mind you then both sides become x become equal so the pressure on the right side is much higher than it should be and that's pulmonary hypertension once the vsd is closed then the pressure normalizes okay so the most common kind of pulmonary hypertension we encounter in our pediatric you know in our population patient population is where it gets better with treatment at the correct time okay the kind that adults see okay. that is different different definitely yeah, yeah. sometimes you know it, it's what we call primary pulmonary yes. hypertension or because of some clots in the lung yes. artery yes. so that's yes. a different etiology Absolutely. or something wrong on the left side of the heart that reflects on the right side uh what is the rate of recovery uh in this uh, process mm -hmm. so it's changed a lot you know i would say every year it gets better compared to when i did my medical schooling uh, where our introduction to you know child heart disease was very primitive and what i wrote, saw you know as an um, intern uh, rotating in the pediatric ward or in the cardiology ward was you know very basic kind of surgeries mm -hmm. but nowadays the sky is the limit the results are amazing mm -hmm. we can realistically tell parents of babies that yes if your baby has a hole yes surgery will be done at this particular time you know do it at the right time and then the child will have a good life so for the most common you know six seven defects that we encounter we are pretty much able to offer a you know very good quality of life right and of course there are others where one surgery doesn't suffice two three surgeries are required mm. or some others even if you do as many surgeries but the heart is not normal mm. those are very very abnormal kind of heart hearts that babies are born with but even for them this day and age things are improving there's heart transplant mm. you know mm. and so many other things so there's always hope that's what i tell patients always hope is there we have seen that infants or the very uh, you know um, young kids come with uh, some complications which parent are not aware of the only thing what they relate to is when they are not functioning properly they are not able to walk properly talk properly eat properly and mm -hmm. respond for that matter but when it comes to the diagnose and the testing and that's where we encounter that yes they have a problem with whole uh, sorry heart they have mm -hmm. a problem with lung they may have a neural trouble or uh, mm -hmm. you know they have a, a pure malnutrition for that mm -hmm. now my what i want to understand from you is especially in this cardiology field um, how are we doing at a rural level to spread the awareness and mm -hmm. also the testing beautiful question and again um, much appreciated what you and your team does for, for the rural areas around you thank you so i would say uh, the government is doing very well mm -hmm. you know I, i've seen a lot of improvement in the past some years mm -hmm. and i'll tell you what i see i see that there's a whole lot of screening in the anganwadis mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of screening happening in schools yes 
you have teams of uh, medical workers going into schools and asking for you know the height and the weight card mm-hmm. and looking to see if there's a murmur mm-hmm. checking the pulse oximeter and then they collect these kids get them over for example i go to you know certain rural areas you know every month mm-hmm. uh, so there we see these children we screen them by echocardiogram echocardiogram is the test to diagnose mm-hmm. congenital heart disease yes. so i see the government the the right from field level you know and getting the child not the story doesn't end there the echo is done we advise surgery for example mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the medical workers then ensure that all the paperwork is in order and then you know look after the family get them give them courage to travel to for example mumbai for the surgery you know otherwise they are very scared to travel yes. to a big city yes. where they know no one okay. so there's no money involved that the patient pays okay so so i i am really really heartened to see all of that you know that we are able to help children who really have whose parents have Correct. no money and suddenly their life really helpless is yes so what i would like to see however is we were talking about the pulse oximeter so i would like to see you know the age appropriate pulse oximeter the mm-hmm. saturation checking device okay so not the digital one but there's a special wrap around tape one okay that you know that everybody every state in india starts using it for mm-hmm. all their bonds mm-hmm. you know, so that we can pick up the heart defects in time because otherwise they come in on day 3 day 4 of life after going home in a critical condition oh so then it's very hard definitely so this is a simple thing that can detect many problems okay okay how uh, challenging it is to Uh, prepare the kid i mean if the infant you don't have to do much but the young kids for the surgery because uh, can they really withstand or what any specific precaution that you need to take as a surgeon so you are asking from the parents perspective and right? yeah, yeah yeah family as well family family's perspective so so let's see up to actually 5 6 7 years Mm. they don't know the parents get them mm. and you know our uh, our team members sweet mm. talk them into coming inside you know yes. chalo chalo godi me they'll take in the lap get them and get things done yes. and the parents always worry about what happens in the icu because mm. icu they're not allowed they cannot see, the yes. best side mm. all mm. the time and they worry are my kid is so naughty he will mm. pull at everything she will do this she will do that how will they but the fact of the matter is you know in my practice never have ever have i seen somebody that the nurses cannot handle mm. they are you know nurses do a beautiful job making the child so totally comfortable oh, okay, okay. they'll nice. talk to them so nicely look mm. after them so nicely that you know parents really when they see the child post operative then they are little relieved you know they see the sister they see the child is not crying and everything and of course you know we use a usual distraction mobile or tv and this and that <laughs> for the older child for the 12 14 year old child <laughs> now that person wants to know everything correct so yeah there the the parents need to do a good job explaining what is happening why are we doing this and you know important thing i always tell them is the teenagers and the family that listen your child's heart is healthy it is pumping well it's just that there is a hole that yeah, will be repaired yeah. so no need to worry yeah. you're not going to be a heart patient you don't it's not as if you won't be allowed to eat this and that and yeah. you can't walk so many steps it's not like that yeah. your operation or your you know that procedure will be done and you know your life will go on yeah. so teenagers yes that's that's a difficult group but i enjoy interacting with them i'm yeah. sure i have seen some of the posts that you have put in wherein you are engaging with kids you are talking uh-huh. to them and <laughs> doing that initial ice break and uh, discussions mm-hmm. uh, that's really interesting doctor billion dollar question after the surgery uh, can the child live a normal life a, a play a sports and everything else that other kids want to so the short answer is yes absolutely okay. i mean we don't define success as the operation went well success for a child means being able to do what any other child yes. does yes. so that means going home playing attending yes. school doing yes. well in school 
people yes. you know not being bed bound being able to play football cricket mm-hmm. badminton mm-hmm. whatever it is you want mm-hmm. to play mm-hmm. definitely yes. yes of course there are exceptions hmm? okay. yeah. of course things can go wrong yeah. but if you look at the big picture big picture says that a child operated for a heart defect at the correct time is going to have a good quality of life normal life correct perfect yes normal wonderful one well, last uh, doubt the ventricular septal defect uh, what is it is it found in kids and also how do you fix it so the ventricular septal defect uh, or abbreviated as the vsd is one of the most common kind of heart defects hole in the heart okay so it uh, if it is small then the doctor who is listening to the child with a stethoscope will hear a murmur Okay. and send the child for an echocardiogram that will show the vsd on the other hand if it is a large vsd then usually the murmur is not very audible so when the doctor listens will not pick up anything i see okay. but like we talked about in the very beginning a large vsd will show up as baby not thriving not putting okay. on weight okay. getting infections yes and the vsd is repairable mostly by surgery mm-hmm. although certain kinds can be closed by putting in a button in the cath uh-huh. lab uh-huh. and it's one time usually okay. uh, you know procedure and whether it's surgery or a button mm-hmm. and the child gets to have a normal life one important thing i want to talk about a vsd yeah. a large vsd if your pediatric cardiac specialist is telling you to get operated at 3 months 4 months of age please go ahead because if you feel child is too small mm. you know too delicate uh, let us wait more mm. so that's that's really bad i see uh, this waiting business makes the child inoperable pulmonary hypertension becomes very severe, very severe yes. and later on we cannot do anything at all the child is inoperable and mm. cannot lead a normal life anything that you want to add as a knowledge so i think we covered a lot of the important points mm-hmm. uh, especially about fetal echocardiography mm-hmm. uh, its role in picking up heart defects before birth mm-hmm. uh, second thing about the vsd and other kind of heart defects where it's important to get you know treated on time mm-hmm. and not wait mm-hmm. like you yourself pointed out waiting actually increases the risk yes. for the child and third thing is to get out of the mindset that heart defect if a child is born with a heart defect means it's bad news mm-hmm. and the child will spend the life in bed it's not like that at all mm-hmm. the child can do anything and everything that other children can after surgery uh, what we can talk about is uh, something that i uh, have an interest in which is heart transplants uh-huh. Now, if you talk about pediatric heart transplant, I'm so happy to share that it's not exotic anymore. Hmm? It's becoming like we can't put it in the commonplace category yet, but it's you know it's fairly common, all right. So in India, uh-huh. as it is in the world, all over, I think 500 pediatric age group transplants are performed every year. Okay. So I think in India that way now we must be doing some around 50 or so a year. okay in various centers okay and the most uh, the children who get this pediatric heart the recipients are those who have a generally a heart disease which mm-hmm. is different from the heart defects by birth generally yeah. the most common kind of heart disease is that dilated cardiomyopathy uh-huh. where the heart muscle is abnormal mm-hmm. for whatever reason uh so if they have that heart the heart pumping is very poor and they don't thrive and there's a risk of death so they become heart transplant recipients and uh, once the transplant is done then they need to be on daily medic- medications okay. Okay. but the life quality turns around totally they can do whatever like other kids are doing school okay. college job you know so that's a very very encouraging thing you know that i'm seeing now in my career it's nice to be able to offer parents hope because five years ago i could say do nothing for them i used to yeah. say take these medicines you know yeah. how long the effect will know. last yeah. or the child will you know survive i don't know but there's nothing else i can do mm-hmm. now for the same child i can offer heart mm-hmm. transplant mm-hmm. so that's good uh, this leads to two questions doctor if uh, you are okay uh, 
one is uh, how is the recovery rate in kids better than the adults one and second uh, question is uh, the adult heart is suitable for the uh, small kid as well beautiful question so the recovery rate or the success rate ah, success rate we talk rate, about yeah. survival after yes. transplant is the best ah, in newborns so. Also, and in the yeah. first year of life, if a baby gets a heart transplant, mm -hmm. they do so well. Wow. See, the main danger after heart transplant is that the heart is a foreign object to yes. the body. So yes. it rejects. Yes. But if you're giving it in a, in a newborn stage. baby, yes. Yes. then they don't have that many antibodies prepared True. yet. True. So they kind of, it's easier for them Adapts to accept very fast. That. Yes, yes. Absolutely. So the newborn results are better than the pediatric age group, which are better than the adult. Great. Yeah. So, and your second question was, yeah, whether adult heart. Okay. So let me tell you that there is a rule that we follow. Mm -hmm. We match the blood group and we mm -hmm. match the uh, approximate weight. I see. If the recipient is the child who needs a heart is 10 kg, mm -hmm. then we can get the heart of somebody who is up to 30, 35 kgs. Okay. We actually talk about that heart of the adult that big heart yeah. is their place for it in the yeah. child. Yeah. Remember, though, the child who's getting the heart, if he has the most common kind, what I mentioned, dilated cardiomyopathy, yeah. their heart tends to be huge. Large, you say, yes. large. Yes. Yes. So unfortunately or fortunately, they have a lot of space in their chest. Yeah. So that heart fits. Yeah. And over time, it deconditions and adjusts to the new body that it has to serve. Sure. <laughs> mm. Amazing. Thing. Miracle, yes. Miracle. Nature is miraculous, definitely. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Doctor, that's all I had. Thank you very much for your time and uh, wishing welcome. you all the best. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank really you inspired know. by all what you do. Apart from your regular work, you do such a lot of uh, things that, that's amazing. Thank you. Please Thanks keep it up and do let me know if I can you know, help in any manner. Definitely, definitely. Thanks so much, Doctor. All the best. Thank you.